Hello everyone. In the last lecture, uh, we were looking at uh, some properties of groups and that was also the end of chapter 1. In chapter 1, we have seen the definition of binary operations and then we looked at definition of a group, an abelian group. We looked at several examples of groups and we also saw certain properties of groups. In this lecture, we will be starting with chapter 2 where we will be studying subgroups and a special kind of subgroup called as cyclic subgroups. So let us begin with the definition of a subgroup. Now before I give you all the definition of a subgroup, let us also just for the sake of convenience agree upon certain terminology that we are going to use rather a simplified terminology that we are going to use. So let me give that as a note to begin with. Suppose I have a group. Now remember for a group we need two things. We need a non-empty set G and a binary operation star on it which will satisfy certain conditions. So if I have a group G for, with respect to a binary operation star and I take any two elements A and B in G, I know that A star B which is the combination of A and B with this operation is also going to be an element of G. Now just for ease of notation, instead of calling this as A star B, this is when I'm talking about a general group, not a specific example. So if I'm talking about a general group and I'm talking about A star B, just to simplify things for us, instead of writing it as A star B, we agree to write this element either as A dot B or AB. It becomes a little tedious to keep writing star throughout the expression. So instead of star, we will write dot or we will simply do juxtaposition of A and B. It is understood that this dot does not really stand for multiplication in general. It stands for whatever is the operation on the group. So we agree to replace A star B by A dot B or AB just for convenience of writing the whole thing. And therefore, it is also okay to call this as product of A and B, though I do not really mean product as in usual sense of multiplication of A with B. So, A dot B will be called as product of AB, but what I really mean is it is A star B. So, I will still call this as product, but with the understanding that this may not be usual multiplication or any other multiplication for that matter. When I say product of A with B, what I really mean is A star B. Then actually if that star is addition in a specific uh, example, it will be A plus B. But in general, we instead of writing A star B, it will be much more convenient as you will see to write it as A dot B or AB and call it as product of A and B. Also, we are going to do one more thing. Instead of every time writing let G comma star be a group, we will simply say that G is a group. Again, this is only for convenience of the terminology. So, uh, when I say G is a group, there still is a binary operation on it. The understanding is that there is some binary operation on it. So, uh, with that understanding, we will simply use this notation, let G be a group. So, the, when I say let G be a group, the tacit agreement here is that it is not just a set, but there is some binary operation working on it. So keep this in mind. Let us now come to the definition of a subgroup. So suppose, this picture should help. Suppose I have a group G 
as I said in the note, it is understood that when I say G is a group, there is some binary operation that I have in mind on G. So G is a group with respect to some binary operation on it. Now, suppose I take H to be a subset of G. So suppose H happens to be a subset of G. And if it so happens that with respect to the same operation as in G, H also becomes a group. Now actually the operation star is on the set G. But you can also look upon the restriction of this operation on H. So when I say H with respect to star, this star is the restricted operation on this set. So H with respect to this operation should also be a group. So if that happens, it is like I have a smaller group sitting inside a bigger group. So if H is not just a subset of G, but H also becomes a group on its own with respect to the same operation as in G. That restricted operation is called as induced operation on H. So if H also becomes a group with respect to the same operation as in G, then we will say that H is a subgroup of G. And if H is a subgroup of G, I will use this notation kind of less than or equal to or turn it around you can also write it this way. So this is the notation that we are going to use for a subgroup. So that brings us to the definition of a subgroup. Suppose H is a subset of a group G. Again I remind you when I say a group G it is understood that there is some binary operation on it and suppose this set is closed under the uh, binary under the binary operation of G and H also becomes a group on its own under the same operation as in G then we will say that H is a subgroup of G and this is the notation that we will use for a subgroup. Please note the difference between subset and subgroup. Also the difference in the notation. So if H is a subset and in addition to that, if it also becomes a group on its own with respect to the same operation as in G, these two operations have to be the same, then H will be called a subgroup and this is the notation that we use to denote that H is a subgroup of G. If instead of this, I write H less than G or I use this kind of a notation, then it still means that H is a subgroup of G but here I am sure that H is not the whole of G. So if I use this notation specifically it will mean that H is still a subgroup of G but now I am sure that H is not the whole of G. So I think that should make the idea of a subgroup clear. Now before I give you specific examples of subgroups, let's see two kinds of subgroups which any group will have. So I give that as a note. Suppose I take any group G. Let me take any group G and let me take, now when I say it's a group, of course, there's some operation, there's some binary operation on it. And also, every group necessarily has to have identity. Remember, identity is the most important element in a group. So, in the moment I say G is a group, I'm sure about one element in this group and that is identity. And that normally we denote by E. So, let E be identity in G. And let us take this subset of G. So if I take H to be this subset of G, it is very easy to verify that H will become a sub, H will become a group on its own. So you can actually make a composition table for just this one element and you can check because E star E will be E. All properties will be satisfied and H will become a group on its own. 
H is a subset of G. So H will be a subgroup of G. So when I take set containing only identity, definitely it is a subgroup. Likewise, suppose I take H equal to the whole of G. Remember every set is a subset of itself. So if I take H equal to G, H is surely a subset of G and also H is a group by itself because H is the same as G. So if G is a group, H better be a group. Now, therefore, H is a subset of G, H is a group on its own and therefore, this is also a subgroup of G. So, we notice that for any group G, there are definitely two subgroups. So, for any group G, I will get this subgroup as well as, sorry, for any group G, I will get this subgroup as well as this subgroup. This subgroup is called as trivial subgroup of G. So the set containing identity will always be a subgroup of G and this is called trivial subgroup of G. There is nothing very great about it. So this is a trivial subgroup of G and any other subgroup of G besides this will be called a non-trivial subgroup. Also, if you look at this other group, G, then we know that G is a subset of G, but G is an improper subset of G. G is a subgroup of G now. So, this subgroup will be called an improper subgroup of G. So, for every group, you will definitely come across these two subgroups set containing identity called as trivial subgroup, set and as the whole set G that will be called as improper subgroup of G. Any other subgroup of G other than this will be called a proper subgroup. So if I take a subgroup of G which is different from E and different from G, what would you like to call it? Just give it a moment's thought. Pause your video and think about it. If it is not this, it is not trivial. And if it is not the whole group, it is not improper, means it is proper. So any subgroup of G which is different from these two will be called a proper, non-trivial subgroup of G. So any subgroup of G other than identity as well as the whole group will be called a non-trivial proper subgroup of G. And let us quickly look at two examples. Example 1. Look at set of rational numbers with respect to addition and look at set of real numbers with respect to addition. Then we know that a set of rational numbers with respect to addition is a group. Set of real numbers with respect to addition is a group. Operations are the same. And Q is a subset of R. So definitely this is a subgroup of this. This is a smaller group lying inside this. So this becomes a subgroup of this. On the other hand, look at this example. Q star with respect to multiplication. And look at the set of real numbers with respect to addition. Again, pause your video and think about whether this is a subgroup of this. So if you have attempted it, let me tell you what is the answer. I know this is a group. Set of real numbers with respect to addition is a group. Set of non-zero real rational numbers with respect to multiplication is definitely a group. And in addition to that, Q star is a subset of R. However, it is not a subgroup because operations are different. Remember I told you that the sub sub subset has to be a group on its own with respect to the same operation. So because the operations are different, this is not a subgroup of R+. In the next uh, lecture, 
we will look at some more examples of subgroups. Thank you.